And um, uh, and so, you know, the skill that I, I really tried to hone was um, in the one direction, being able to explain in easy concepts what it was that we were, we were doing or capable of doing or dreamed of doing. Um, and then on the, other, uh, on the other hand, being able to explain back to the technical people, um, this is what the market is itching for, this is what customers want. Um, and being able to explain, okay, in terms of the system that you're trying to build, these are the, these are the subsystems or these are the additional pieces to the system that we need in order to have the product that they want. So I was kind of, I was interpreting, interpreting in both directions, um, at a concept level, not at a syntax level. Um, so, you know, th there's an interesting thing, as an, as an entrepreneur, one of the, the, the next things I learned is that, um, you know, the, the, it, it's a creative process, right? You, you're, you're starting with something that's inside your head. Um, and if things go really well and fortune shines on you, it goes from something inside your head to something that everyone can see and touch and maybe even spend money on. And it is, I mean, it's, it's, you're making something out of nothing. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, an, it's just a wonderful process. Uh, but in the process of making something out of nothing, um, you're, uh, there, it's, it's, there's a, there's, it's kind of a bootstrap process, right? So you go from really nothing to at least something that sounds the same every time you describe it, it's kind of, it, there's a consistency to it, it starts to become coherent. Um, and then it, you, you start to have to get other people involved in it and, and get to physical things. Well, so the, the first <coughs> physical resource that you have access to, the first you know, re, real resource that you can get access to is trust. Um, because trust is, it's like, it's like it has its own economy, right? You can, um, you, you accumulate trust from other people in the ways that you interact with people. Um, and then at certain levels, you spend that trust to get other things, right? So it, in, in the course of, and I, I, I started three companies, I took a break, and I'm in the course of being part of, I've come, I came in slightly after the start of the fourth company right now. Um, the first one was with Da Vinci, and we were just, broadly speaking, we wanted to see if some people, some kids from North Carolina could get rich and famous in the software business. We were very non-specific, I think, outside of that to begin with. Um, which was wonderful, and it, it turned out that they kind of could. Um, but once that happened, we were sort of, we were kind of out of vision, right? What, what happens next? Um, and that was, you know, the, the, once the email company was up, I don't think that we were terribly well equipped to know where to take it next. We probably should have sold, sold it in 89 at that point. But not knowing any better and having fun at the time, we kept going until we went from having competitors roughly our size to competitors like you know, Microsoft and Lotus and Word Perfect, whose coffee budgets probably dwarfed our revenues. Uh, and so, it, you know, it, it became a different space and a different set of problems to solve. So, um, so but getting back to uh, getting back to trust, um, when I started the next company, um, I had. Um, I had to find investors, um, so I essentially had to develop enough trust with people that were willing to put money into what it is I was doing. I needed people who could write code for me and could put the marketing together for me and who could sell for me, and I had to convince them to quit their good jobs or leave and stop doing what they thought they were going to do, like what Bob did with, with Matthew Zulu. And that was a matter of spending trust. I had to get customers to actually use my product, right? And so they were, um, they had to trust me enough to risk their resources and their time on it, if not, and, and eventually their money once it started working in that case. I had to get people to write about it in the press, right? And so they, had to, I, I, they needed to trust that I was going to tell them something that was worth writing about and that was true. So really, in, in every direction, um, it, it, at any time that you're trying to get something done with somebody else, usually it involves some transaction of trust. Um, and if, if you spend your trust, and it winds up working out well for the other person, your trust comes back with interest. Right? They're willing to trust you more next time. If you spend your trust doesn't work out so well, you've got to go find somebody else who you know, hasn't made that mistake with you yet. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I, I find that within this process, largely what I was doing the, the next time around in, in, in a startup was I was essentially managing trust between people um, and figuring out how do I accumulate enough trust to get what I need um, and then, where do I want to spend it in order? You know, who, where, where do I want to spend it in order to get where I want to go? So, um, 
uh, you know, with, within that process, it, and it's um, and it's funny. Different people have different thresholds, uh, and there's different kinds of trust. There's a trust and confidence, right? Do I? Um, sometimes it was a matter of, do I know what I'm doing? Um, we were we were deadlocked with uh, uh, a competitor, Net, net Gravity, uh, and the. Um, Oh, I haven't even told you what the other companies are yet. So the first one was email. Uh, the second one was actually a little publishing company uh, that I started because I wanted to do something out of my house for a few years while we were having kids. And it just every few months I had to sell enough advertising um, for people to for people to be part of kind of a buyer's guide around database software. <coughs> and then um, if they sold it, they pretty much gave me their content, and I had somebody else lay it out, and I had somebody print it, and I had somebody ship it, and so I, I could run it out of my basement. I didn't really have any employees, but it, you know, every few months I would do that, and it would pay the bills nicely. Um, the third business uh, was was a more legitimate uh, startup with higher aspirations, um, and that was when I I took the second one, and I I was realizing that. Um, this is in 96, the commercial internet was, was coming out and I was realizing that people that had been spending money on my crummy little catalog were gonna repurpose that money into the internet and so I better be in the internet so that I can keep those customers. You know, and once you have somebody who's spending money on you, they trust you and so you wanna keep finding ways for them to spend money on you because it's a lot easier to do that. It's a lot easier to sell stuff to people who are already buying from you than to somebody else. So. I was moving on to the internet, and uh, I was having a terrible time building, and I, I was just going to make sort of an internet-based buyer's guide, but it, all the software to do it was, was crap. It was like going back 10 years uh, in, in terms of how primitive it was, uh, how much work it took to make a decent website, and how poor the tools <coughs> were. And I just couldn't believe that it was that bad until I started calling around to people I made friends with in, in my previous gigs, uh, and say, who are now webmasters at companies, and saying, well, how are, you, how are you managing your advertising? How are you tracking you know, who's coming to your site and what they come back? How are what you am getting I missing, it? Right? What? What, am I, what am I missing? Yeah, yeah. Where, where's the software? Because I can't find it. And, and they're saying, you know, we're having to write all that in-house, too. But, you know, if you find something that works, call us back, because we really don't want to write this stuff. You know, but we're, you know, so if you find something, you know, we, we feel your pain, let us know if you find something. So, I hear about that a few times, and I realize, you know, maybe I'm in the wrong business. And uh, so I thought that I was going to build software that was um, essentially a three-legged stool, uh, one that would manage the, the uh, advertising banner ad rotation on websites, because that was a real hassle to get done. Uh, part that would take their printed magazine content and move it up onto the web, sort of re content management. Uh, and the third was um, uh, uh, subscriber management. Right, who's, who, who's there, what, what are the demographics of the people that are coming to me, how often are they coming back, and where are they coming from? Because um, those, those are the three core businesses to a magazine. Um, so I raised a little money around that uh, and started building software. And uh, when I came to, uh, uh, when I got enough of it to start doing power, a sort of PowerPoint to say, you know, to come, on, come back to these people and say, okay, this is what I'm making, are you interested? Um, an interesting thing happened. I never got past the banner ad management part of the presentation. Um, they wanted to ask me so many questions about it, what it could do, when it was available, that they, I, I never got to the user subscriber management or any of that stuff. And, uh, you know, interesting thing, some of the time you find yourself coming across an urgent itch that the market has. Um, and when, when there's an urgent itch, you can't think of anything else. And, and in this case, in this particular moment of the internet, what, what I now know is happening was that there were all these um, early websites, let's say like you know, sort of MTV on MTV.com or uh, big magazines and other, uh, other big sites early on that they recently got started. They just raised four or five million dollars of capital. They spent a half million dollars hiring the, the biggest, most experienced ad sales guy that they can find. Um, and then they turned them loose to go make some sales. This guy, having no idea what a website is, happily went off and made those sales anyway because they've been selling so long to their customers that they could sell them anything. Now they come back with a bunch of contracts saying, okay, I've got, you know, this guy's gonna pay you $100,000, all you have to do is run their ad 25,000 times a day over the next 30 days or during this time of the day. And the, the, 
you know, and, and the, the technical guys are like, we can't do that. And we can't recognize the revenue. We can't actually sort of build the customer until we can. And so they were sitting on all this business that they couldn't actually realize unless they had something that would do what I just sort of strolled in and said, I'm going to be in the business of doing. So um, they were all very keen to get on this, this uh, banner ad inventory, banner ad management system very quickly. Uh, so I came back from a couple of these meetings and I took the engineering staff and said basically everything you thought you were doing, go ahead and sort of put that on the back burner somewhere. We are all in the business of getting the banner ad management software up now. We may eventually get back to these other parts of the business, but the market has told me the business that we need to be in. Um, so I took what was a you know a pretty plausible business plan, uh, and you know I, you have to if the market tells you it wants something and you're close enough to being able to deliver it, then be that for goodness sake. <laughs> you know you can get around to doing the thing that you want to do later um, if the opportunity presents itself. So we were um, uh, we were the, one of the first products to market. There was uh, the the first one was NetGravity. Uh, and they came out a couple months before us, um, but a little bit too early to know what exactly was necessary. And this is, uh, you know, th there's a lot of psychology, um, I think, in entrepreneurship and, and in good product design. You're trying to, uh, you, the better you are at understanding people and what they want and don't want and how they want to do business, the better off, the better your products are going to be. And in this case, you know, there's a, there's a matter of system thinking. Okay, what is this internet advertising going to look like? And because I'd spent time selling ads in a slightly different format, I had a, I had a sense of how buyers wanted to buy, how sellers wanted to sell them, um, and we were <laughs> we weren't just making software. We were kind of making up the rules for how internet advertising was was going to work. Um, what the, what the format was? Do you you know do you want to be able to sell? And it was it, it really came down to this whole cost per thousand ads. This, you know, it, it's not being sold based upon time, and it's not being sold based upon so much to sit on a page, you know, but it's a certain number of ads being delivered over a certain period of time metered out during that time. And um, how do you want to be able to target it? And then after that, what kind of reporting does your customer want? When they go back and see, you know, that when, when they advertise in Time Magazine, they have no idea how many people actually looked at it and what they did with it. I can tell you, how many, how many were seen today and how many times that it was seen it was clicked on. And if you, if you want to run five different kinds of ads, I can, I can let you try five different and let you see which one's performing better than any others. Um, and that was some basic reporting stuff. But figuring out what is the customer going to want and being there was something that we, I feel like we were good at and wanted, you know, wanted to get good at. So we had, um, we had stronger technology. Now, um, to tie into something that Bob said, um, and, where I, where I, and where I thought he was going, he, he talked about there being different stages of customers, right? So there's, there are early stage customers, um, and, and the way that they look at things is that they see themselves as they're going to give their company a competitive edge by adopting a technology, right? So by, um, an example that I love is, is early on um, in the delivery business, FedEx made a huge investment um, in putting a mobile platform with all their drivers so that when they dropped a package off to you, instead of you signing a piece of paper, you signed on a box of theirs. And by the time that guy got back in the van, their computer system knew that that package had been delivered and who signed for it. Um, and it was a huge investment for them to be able to do that, but they caught up and passed UPS by the time UPS was able to duplicate it.